and welcome to Badger Talks Live, bringing exciting happenings, resources, and talent from your UW flagship campus to the people of Wisconsin and beyond. I'm Fran Paleo Moyer, Assistant Director of Outreach, and today we're so excited to present to you a behind the scenes peek at the Chazen Museum of Art, specifically highlights from the 2020 faculty exhibition. Chief Curator Catherine Alkoskis will be your guide. Catherine received an MA in Art History from Williams College and has previously held positions at the Museum of Modern Art in New York City, University Art Gallery, and the Ruth and Elmer Wellen Museum of Art at New York's Hamilton College. Please welcome Catherine Alkoskis. Hi, and welcome. Hi, welcome to the Chazen Museum. We are currently closed to the public, unfortunately, but um, I would, I'm delighted to, to welcome you here today virtually for an exhibition tour of our 2020 faculty exhibition. This show opened February 1st, um, and we'll hopefully continue through the summer in hopes that we will reopen and can, you can see it in person yourselves. Um, every year since, every four years since the museum opened in 1970, we've held a faculty exhibition. This one, however, is slightly different because our new director, Amy Gilman, decided to open the exhibition not just to the art department, but to any faculty teaching and using art making as a resource in their practice um, across campus. So we have 26 artists participating in 10 different areas across campus. So we're not gonna have a chance today to see the entire exhibition. We're only going to go into the one gallery, the Roland Gallery, and I'll highlight a few of the special artists who are featured here. So we are entering the gallery now. I'll give you a little brief overview of the entire uh, area. And the first artist we're going to talk about is Tom Lozier. He is a uh, professor of design and furniture making, and he created these unique forms that are both usable and transformable. They can be used in this direction, or in this direction. And if you were here in person, you can try them out. All the artists in the exhibition were asked to uh, originate a piece or find a piece in their uh, oeuvre that corresponded or was made in response to something in the Chazen's permanent collection. So Tom's work is made in relation to this large red piece in our permanent collection by Roberto Mata. Um, this Malit seating system is, like his work, adaptable for any purpose. You can take these pieces apart and sit on, sit on them in a variety of ways, just like Tom's work. Next, we're going to look at um, Anthony Cerulli's work. It's behind the chairs here. Anthony is a professor of Asian language and literature. He is interested in the ethnography, study of language, and in photography. His photographs are of Indian archives in India. And he's interested in what becomes of the archive when the archive becomes art. And he decided to pair these with some works in our permanent collection from the Watson collection. These are actual Indian miniatures, as you saw in his photographs. Here are some examples from the Watson collection that are framed and mounted. They're very fine, as you can see.
Next, we're going to continue this direction all the way down to the end. And I'll show you some other works as we move along. On the right here is a work by Michael Vilquet. And on the left, it's paired with a work from the permanent collection by Rudolf de Creeny. Michael Velikett's work is very detail-oriented. He makes these all from cut paper. And I'll try to give you a side view so you can really see the relief on this piece. Michael just participated in a happy hour that the Chazen Museum had, um, which you can check out on the Chazen Museum's Facebook page. The next artist we're going to talk about is Darcy Padilla. She's a professor in the art department. And she has part of a series here of work um, of residents of the Ambassador Hotel in San Francisco during the AIDS crisis. Here's a close up of the building. And then here are some pictures of the residents themselves. Again, these were men afflicted with AIDS. And Darcy's chose as her um, complement a series of images in our permanent collection by W. Eugene Smith, an important photographer who did two series that have become very well known. This is from a series called Maud on a Midwife. But there was a similar series that this artist did. Here's the actual Life magazine spread that you can see with images of Maud, um, like the ones on the wall. The counter to this series was called Country Doctor, and I think a lot of people might be familiar with that. It was very influential. I've, in just in the last few months um, with the pandemic, I've heard many art historians and photographers mention this as being extremely influential to why they decided to take up a camera or even go into medical services. Darcy says that um, between her and W. Eugene Smith, she sees similar in similarity in using documentary photography um, for kind of humanistic means. Next, we're going to move over here. And this is kind of a unusual type of artwork. This is a piece called Come to the Table by um, the artist's group, Spatula and Barcode, which is made up of faculty artists, Mary Beth, Mary, sorry, Lori Beth Clark and Michael Peterson. And um, what happens here is four times during the course of the show, dinners were intended to take place. Uh, dinner parties, in fact, which is very unusual for a museum. And uh, we had to look into a lot of red tape to see how we could make that function. But the artists um, have a theme for this entire, entire installation, which includes not just the dinners that take place here at the table, but also these works from the permanent collection that the artists worked with curators, um, our works on paper, curator James Wen and our painting, sculpture, and deck arts curator Maria Safiotti dale to come up with a group of objects that match the theme of generosity or speak to that theme. And each of the four dinners uh, take place around a theme related to this larger theme, theme of generosity. What's quite generous <laughs> of, that these artists did was these two large, I'm trying to back up so you can see these. <laughs> these two large tapestries on the wall are called Last Supper One and Last Supper Two. And they um, are by a separate, different faculty artist, Fazal Abdullah. And they were made in collaboration with another artist, Kofi Allen. And it was so nice that these faculty artists chose as a compliment the work of another faculty artist. We thought that was 
really truly part of their theme of generosity. We're gonna move over here to the map. And I just show you this to highlight that um, the exhibition doesn't just span this gallery, the Roland Gallery, which you see here, but a lot of artist participants um, intervened in various spaces all over the entire museum. So I really hope that you have a chance to visit in person when we reopen. Here's a list of all the participants. Today, we're just seeing a small selection. The next work I want to show you is the, this piece. It's a little bright, so I'm going to get closer. This is by Sarah Fitzallen, and she's interested in landscape, depicting landscape. But this is probably not what one would expect of a landscape. This is, in fact, these uh, plexiglass vessels filled with water. And they're wa water from various bodies that she has visited and collected. You can see, I think, a little, you get really close, you can see some of the sediment there from the lakes and waters. So you can see that they're from the Pacific Ocean, Lake Michigan, and others. In addition to the books that you see here on the shelf, she also put a number into circulation at in the Kohler Art Library and a couple other libraries across campus so that if you were interested, you could potentially check them out and handle them yourselves. She paired this with a work from the permanent collection by Renat Aller um, showing an oceanscape, which is fitting. So now we're going to move back this way. And our next artist I'm going to talk about is Mishka Lewis. She's done this series of circular objects that are actually access covers, manhole covers. And she's paired it with the work of Nicola Lopez, which I'm showing you here. And Lo both Lopez and Lewis are interested in urban, these urban forms. So you can see some of that here. I'm going to get even closer. This is a print using various techniques. And you can see elements of uh, scaffolding, chains, pipes. And there's a slight relief element to this too. You can see some of the areas um, actually project in, into, towards our space. So like Nicola Lewis, Mishka, sorry, like Nicola Lopez, Mishka Lewis is interested in these urban forms. So she bases these on two-dimensional photographs and images that she finds, but they're actually three-dimensional recreations that use carved wood and flocking to imitate the sense that the photographs have. So again, I'm showing you front on, and then I'm going to bring you closer so you can see the three-dimensionality of this. You can see how they project off the wall a little. Mishka is the curator at Tandem Press, where Nicolo Lopez's prints were created. Here's another one by Nicola. I 
think here you can really see some of the three-dimensionality of this piece. And lastly, I'm going to talk about Tomiko Jones, um, who's a photography professor here. She created these three photographs and has paired them with six woodblock prints in our collection in the Van Vleck print collection. I'll first show you these. I'll just show you a couple of them here. And Tamika was very interested in um, investigating the idea of landscape and she's grown up around these woodblock prints and was interested in exploring her new home of Wisconsin um, using kind of some of the same maybe sensibility but through a different medium here photographs. The process she uses for these is actually more of a kind of old-fashioned process. So I want to make sure we have time for questions. Um, I'll give you a one last look around the whole gallery and I'm happy to answer um, any questions you might have and also um, kind of I can, I can move around if there's something else that you saw today that you'd like to see. Um, I should mention that uh, this piece here is a neon piece that is not currently working. There's a number of pieces that um, require audio and um, light and they're not currently, since we're not up, open to the public, they're not fully engaged. So I apologize for that. We really look forward to welcoming everyone to the museum when we reopen. And I hope that this has given you a little taste of what is currently on view. Um, and a lot of these artworks, the ones in our permanent collection, for example, uh, will be available and likely on view from time to time in our galleries. But whereas the faculty work um, will probably be on view, the faculty show a lot in various capacities around campus. I hope this has given you a taste of uh, the really creative work that's taking place here at UW um, and the variety of types of work that our faculty are engaged in and producing right now. They're a really creative bunch. So there's a question about what the long-term future is for the museum. Um, you know, I'm not quite sure what uh, vein you're interested in with that question, but uh, I think we are on steady um, financial grounds and we're looking forward to a bright future. For now, I can also say that um, a large project I've been working on as chief curator is um, an upcoming permanent collection reinstallation in which we'll be redesigning um, the galleries up on the third floor. And uh, that will probably take place in four or five years time. So that's a kind of long-term project that we're working on here. In addition, we are trying to line up exhibitions two or three years into the future. And uh, right now that's a little hard uh, <laughs> because things are changing so quickly, but it is something we're working on. The dinners, uh, there was a question about the dinners that are associated with this piece down at the end of the gallery. I believe all four have already been held. This show is a, originally intended to end around this time. We've extended it through the summer. The first two dinners were held in person here and 
uh, visitors were invited to come and sit and see the conversation as it occurred. And the last two did occur, though they occurred virtually, which I know is not um, the ideal for the situation, but it was effective. I'd be happy to answer any other questions you might have about the show or about the museum in general. So feel free to just ask away. Oh, there's a question about um, the photographer. So let me get back to that. I believe they were salt gum prints. Sorry, they were gum bichromate prints. So I'll try to get a little closer. So this was a, a processes that was developed um, in the late 19th century and is not super common right now, but um, she had it, was employing it. It's very um, uh, difficult. Like it's very, uh, takes a long time to execute. I'll try to get you even closer so you can see some of the, the detail. I'm sorry that there's a bit of a reflection. Well, um, if there's no other questions, uh, then I think I'm going to wrap up. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, we wish you all well. We hope that you come and visit the museum when we reopen and that you have a chance to experience some of the faculty members' work, works even, either in this show or in another exhibition here at UW in the future. Thanks. Thank you all for tuning in and be sure to join us for our next Badger Talks Live on Tuesday, May 12th at noon when we will be featuring a premier performance by the UW faculty woodwind quintet with commentary by Assistant Professor of Clarinet, Alicia Lee. Please visit badgertalks.wisc.edu for the complete schedule of live talks and for a link to YouTube where we're also saving these talks and closed captioning them. Thanks for tuning in and be well.